All right, welcome in, hockey fans in the desert southwest. It's another Sunday special presented by Bell Ford. You can see we're in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. Our beat reporter with the Golden Knights, Stephen Marsh, is with me. We're masked up, Stephen, because it is uh, still COVID. Um, beautiful out here today, though. A little hot, but not too bad. A little but, windy, but... And a little windy, right? A little windy, yeah, but, you know, that's good, though. It adds a little, uh, adds a little chill in the air, if you want to call it that in <laughs> July. <laughs> Well, that's exactly what it is, Stephen. It's uh, hockey in July. Yeah. The Golden Knights are preparing themselves for a uh, playoff run, one that they hope will lead to a Stanley Cup. Uh, as they prepare, um, they're finding out that their roster is well-prepared and in pretty good shape. You've seen them practice over the last week. I've seen them practice over the last week. Um, your thoughts on just where they are right now about a week and a half into training camp? Well, I, I think they're I think they're. Pre- just as prepared as any team in the NHL. I think one thing that's interesting is that during the the previous phase, phase two, they were a lot of the players had already were already here in town, so they were already skating in small groups. Maybe when other teams they didn't have all their players back to even sm- skate in small groups, so you had that uh, upper hand. And and in and in training camp now, you've seen that they've uh, they've been out the yesterday, the Monday. They did a, a scrimmage, like almost like a game-like scrimmage, uh, which was like the first time they'd done that. Um, they've done scrimmages after drills and stuff, but they haven't really done any game-like stuff until uh, uh, Tuesday or Monday. And it, they looked uh, really good out there, and 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 I think they're going to be. Uh, I think they're certainly a favorite, and certainly the the, the, the sports books see that way. And and I think they're just going to. It's going to be pre- prepared. I think what one thing that's been neat is, uh, Coach DeBoer, Peter DeBoer, uh, Pete DeBoer has been has been able to kind of start working in the system. It's kind of a unique time, right? You, you come in, you can have a training camp, and you're not even finished with the season yet. So it's it's uh, it's interesting. But I think they're, they're well on their way. Okay, so I said all along for anybody that would listen to me is that I think this will be the best playoffs uh, that we've ever going to see. And knock on wood, we never see it again because we don't want this uh, situation again. But everybody is relatively healthy. They're coming in um, prepared. And, uh, you know, they're they're – there's a fire lit under everybody. We saw it with the Coyotes last weekend. I see it with the Golden Knights here. Everybody's ready. The goaltenders look sharp. Defense, offense, everybody looks like they're ready to play hockey again. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, everybody's everybody's healthy. And and, and that's 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 really it's gonna make this a lot of fun, you're right, Scott. It's everybody's gonna be healthy. Not just the Golden Knights, so every team in the NHL. I mean, this is gonna be some of the best hockey. Uh, that we've ever seen because usually when you get to the playoffs you got a lot of teams that are, are beat up and and are injured and and you know maybe necessarily the, the best team throughout the season is good but you get the hottest team maybe the team that's got full complement of players but everybody's going to be kind of on an equal playing field uh you know you, you knock out home ice advantage which is pretty much gone because it's all going to be on a neutral side and nobody's going to be in the stands so uh everybody's really got a chance and uh but the golden knights look really good uh flurry uh we mentioned you know he, was, he wasn't out there for the first couple of days of training camp probably scared some people i'm sure some people were freaking out some of the media people were probably a little concerned like why isn't flurry out there but you know that the the, the the team is sure that it wasn't anything serious wasn't covid related was you know he was just needed a couple maintenance days he had been skating a lot in the previous phase with the groups and uh probably realized you know we've got a lot of time we don't need to overwork him you know and so uh they they got him a couple days in there but he's, he was able to get in last weekend and he's been out there and he's looked good and of course Leonard uh, who they picked up at the trading deadline looks really good and in fact I think the Golden Knights and some of their scrimmages have had a hard time scoring because <laughs> maybe the goaltending has been very very sharp so it was definitely that way today yeah, yeah so I mean it's they're, they're looking good and, and Pete DeBoer has said that he's not he's not afraid to use both both goalies and and we'll just have to see what happens but uh, yeah Okay, so we look at the uh, training camp situation. It's different than other training camps. You've seen other training camps. This one, though, they're going to jump right from the training camp right into the fire, if you will. They have a little bit of an advantage because they're going to play their uh, round-robin games before they actually start playing playoff games. But your thoughts on that and how you would prepare a hockey team to play that way? Well, I think you're right. I think, you know, because they they get to play a couple of round-robin games, that's going to be... that's going to be helpful. Um, you know, some of these other teams, they get one exhibition game and then they got to go into a, a five round series or best of five series. And, you know, and but the Golden Knights are going to play a few round robin games before, um, which are important games because it will determine seeding and maybe who you'll, who you'll play. But almost other than maybe last change and other things with, with you know, it's not really going to maybe match up on who you might play seeding wise. It really doesn't make difference uh, other than that, but uh, it's it certainly gives you a little bit more flexibility to to try some things and and and, and get going with that and 
And, you know, some of these young players I think about that have come in that they've invited. I mean, think about for them, like a Zach Whitecloud or, uh, you know, some of these other Peyton, Peyton Krebs. Krebs. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, they've, they've, you know, Reed Duke and other, some of these other young players. I mean, this is really like their – I mean, they they're, think about the opportunity for them to, to get in into the roster and because it's a little bit of an expanded roster and to get into the roster and to uh, to have an opportunity to – to play right in the Stanley Cup playoffs instead of doing a training camp and maybe fighting for a spot to get, you know, kind of get going in a regular season environment, you're going right into playoff hockey, which is, you know, obviously the best hockey there is. So it's, it's, it's certainly it's certainly going to be uh, fun, and I can't wait. Well, you can't wait. Neither can everybody else because there's going to be five to six games a day starting up here in August, which is going to be pretty incredible to watch. Well, I missed out on March Madness, so we're going to get August Madness. So, you know, that's, that's okay, right? I mean, you know... I, you know, uh, uh, hockey, Matt, you know, hockey is not bad. <laughs> that's a great way to put it. So as we uh, continue to roll on, let's take a quick break. Let's come back and let's specifically talk about the Golden Knights and what you've seen. And I'll tell you what I've seen, and we'll uh, kind of p- compare notes, if you will. I got my notes right here. So we're <laughs> we'll be right back with another uh, edition, another uh, segment of the Sunday Special presented by Bell Ford. Looking for your next car? Head out to 2401 West Bell Road in Phoenix and stop in at Bell Ford, the Arizona Ford Giant. Come in and check out our great deals on the remaining 2020 Fords, as well as the new 2021 models just arriving, like the new E450 pickup truck during our summer outdoor and SUV sale. Voted the number one Ford dealer in Arizona by ranking Arizona, we will do what it takes to make your car buying experience safe and convenient. Shop online at bellford.com. We will bring everything to you on your schedule. Schedule a test drive. Need a repair? We'll come pick up your vehicle and bring it back to you. Our sales and service professionals are ready to help in any way to make sure you are happy and satisfied. Go online to bellford.com or call us at 1-602-866-1776 and let us show you why we've been the dealership that keeps Shane Doan coming back year after year. The Arizona Ford Giant, Bell Ford. All right, we're back in, folks. Another Sunday special presented by Bell Ford. Scott Strandy, along with our beat reporter from Las Vegas, covering the Golden Knights for us, uh, Stephen Marsh. And uh, Stephen, we're talking about the the playoffs and, and the preparing for the playoffs. Uh, it's different, obviously. You can tell by the masks that that we're masked up and everybody else is, and the restrictions are high. All of that's things. But one thing is the same: is that the Golden Knights. Uh, are here and they're prepared and they're ready. Uh, I want to start talking about the team in itself. And today, as I watched practice, I saw uh, two goaltenders, which I think might be the best tandem in, in the NHL. And they're two completely different styles. You look at one end of the ice and you see the, the always moving Mark Andre Fleury making acrobatic saves. On the other end of the ice, you see Robin Leonard, who's a big, tall, uh, fill the net type goalie who rarely moves and makes the shooter move first and and then just stops a puck. So let's start right there. Your thoughts on the goaltenders right now and who do you think is going to be the one that they lean on or will they lean on one? Well, I, I'm sure they're, they, if one gets really hot, they will lean on one. But, uh, you know, as I mentioned, uh, Pete DeBoer has said that he, he's not a, um, he's not afraid to use either goaltender or use both goaltenders. I think, you know, Flurry was, you know, he's, was re- he's been the face of this franchise, you know, since he was came here on the expansion draft, and he's been phenomenal, and he continues to be that. Um, but you know, they brought in L- Leonard to kind of help complement Flurry, um, you know, and and we've seen Flurry maybe at times not be him as effective as he has been in the past with the first couple of seasons, as he's getting a little bit older and and um, more experienced. But um, so you bring somebody like Leonard now, you have somebody that. that you have confidence in in your backup because that's one thing the Golden Knights maybe they had Flurry and then the, you know they maybe they had that Subban but you know maybe they didn't think that, that he was going to get them to the Stanley Cup and it's, yeah now you have two goaltenders that you feel like will get you to the Stanley Cup and 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 we've seen we've seen good teams be able to use both goaltenders um, you know other than a few exceptions Washington was able to ride a hot goalie you know and Flurry was kind of on the other end of it you know he was this guy and then they brought you know Murray goes in and and and, and was the guy until they won the cup. Uh, that 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 year and in, in Flurry's last season, so um, you know Flurry's been down this road before. He wants to play. I mean, I'm sure you know Flurry's a competitor. He wants to be in there, but uh, if if you know if Leonard's in there and it's a hot, and and uh, and he's riding hot and he's the he's the guy, then 
the Flurry will be there to, to be supportive and be ready to, to get in at any point. And, and for Lando, this is a, a great opportunity for him. He comes from Chicago at the trading deadline, and they and he's got a great opportunity here. You know, there's a question about whether they'll resign him for the next season after this season. So, you know, he's got a good opportunity there, and 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 Leonard's ready to go, and and it's uh it's a good tandem to have, um, and it's and it's it's really it's a welcome sight for uh, for for Vegas-born fans. Okay, we know another thing with Vegas is they can score the puck. They got very talented forwards. They got four lines deep plus when you bring in some of the guys. So I don't think depth is going to hurt the Vegas Golden Knights. As a matter of fact, when you look at that fourth line with Ryan Reeves and and uh, Nosek and guys like that on their uh, Carrier, uh, they're uh, they're guys that can perform for you. And a lot of times they do. They go out and and they'll they'll take. Uh, big hits and and take possession away from the other team. So, I think offensively they're in pretty good shape. Obviously, they're going to lean on Mark Stone and Max Pacioretty and Alex Tuck. I thought today had an outstanding practice. And so, so seeing them all healthy with Jonathan Marchessault and, and you just go down the list of the talented forwards. Tell me your thoughts on the forwards and how how you think they match up in the NHL. Well, they they they're right up there. I, I mean, you look. You talked about Mark Stone. He's he's. <laughs> He's a really good, good player. Uh, Max Pacioretty ha- hasn't been on the ice the last couple of days, but they they said it's not a, a COVID thing. He should be back out there uh, the next couple of days. Uh, but he should be there for the playoffs. And 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 now that everybody's healthy, that's that, that's the key. Is everybody's is healthy, and can get out there. Um, people that we wouldn't have had in the playoffs, like a a Pacioretty or 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 a Stone even or or Tuck even was it. And so now they're all back and and they're able to to play. And it just gives the Golden Knights another edge. Uh, in there and 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 you're right they're able to roll all four lines which is which is something you, you know you, you roll out of your fourth line and and you can rely on them to score even the some of the defensive players um which we may get to but the defensive players even some of them can be a scoring threat i think of somebody like shay theodore who's really had a career year and and pete DeBoer has seen that and he's relied on him more and he's been impressed by his play and 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 we saw in the scrimmage the other day some of the defensemen were the ones that were scoring in the goals. So I, when you have that, when you have your forwards and you have some defensemen that you can rely on to to, to maybe be a threat out there on the ice, uh, it's going to certainly make a, a fearful for the other teams and it gives you the upper edge that anybody you throw out there, you have a good opportunity to, to, to perform and to win. Okay, so let's go to what I thought. If there is a, a weak link in the uh, the Golden Knights, I think they filled it pretty well uh, at the trade deadline when they got Alec Martinez from the, the L.A. Kings. He seemed to have been really fitting in well, and they were playing very well uh, until the COVID-19 shutdown came upon us. Um, so Alec Martinez is there. I said if there was one spot, though, that maybe they could shore up a little bit, it might be one more experienced defenseman. Just your thoughts on the defensive core. You told me a little bit about their offense, but defensively, do you think they're a Stanley Cup championship defensive core? Well, that's going to be the big – that'll be the big thing that we'll have to see. Uh, you know, they have some, some, young, some young players uh, in there, and, and we hope that – They'll be able to participate. As I mentioned, Shea Theodore is somebody that they're very high on, and he's certainly has really stepped up his game this year. Um, this is kind of his first uh, training camp, and it's kind of because last year he was battling the cancer, and so didn't really have a chance to to be in, in camp, and uh, he was overcoming that. But uh, yeah, this is this is going to be uh, it'll be real interesting to see how they, they do on the defensive side. But you know, you've got uh, you got England, you got McNabb, you've got yeah, you've got Martinez, you've got uh, you know, you have Theodore. Um, I, I think they they they're there. That's um, one thing they've, they've been working on. I think is is the power play and the, and the penalty kill, and that'll be. But yeah, I, I uh, we'll have to see with the defense. But but it seems like they they certainly have got the right pieces there too. And um, maybe that'll be something they'll emphasize the next few days uh, as they get ready, and when even when they get to the bubble, because they're going to have some more times to practice, and they'll have an exhibition game against Arizona, and then they'll get into it. But. Okay, that was going to be my next question. When the games start actually being played, um, the NHL is no dummy, right? They matched up Vegas and uh, and the Coyotes in their exhibition game. Uh, we've all kind of wondered, uh, at least from both sides of the coin here, uh, Arizona's trying to really get ready because they've got Nashville right up front. Uh, what, what will Vegas bring, do you think, in that exhibition game? Will they bring everything they got? Will they experiment with some different things, knowing it's an exhibition game? Well... I- I would think they will do a little bit of both. I, I think uh, they're going to be ready to, you know, they haven't played uh, competitive hockey against another team in, in months, you know, four months or so. Um, so I think, you know, they've been doing these practices, they'll be doing these scrimmages, and uh, they'll be 
ready to play another team. So I think you're going to see them be energized and ready to go uh, against uh, the Arizona Coyotes because it will be a different opponent. And it is a regional uh, opponent. The NHL was very smart, I think, to do the exhibition games as, a, as kind of regional matchups in the, in the, in the spots. But uh, I think – but I also think they'll be mindful. They'll, I think there will be some experimentation, I would, I would imagine, um, seeing what will work. And – and um, and maybe you see both goalies come in. Maybe you see one or the other play. But uh, I think you'll see both. I think at the beginning you'll see them be energized and, and go on, and then and then you'll see and then you'll see uh, a little bit of experimentation. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if they they play it full on because uh, they're going to be having a lot to play for. But the Coyotes are certainly going to have a lot to play for too after their exhibition game. All right, let's take one more quick break and let's come back and wrap things up on another Sunday special presented by Bell Ford as we talk NHL. Welcome back to Hockey 2020 here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Looking for your next car? Head out to 2401 West Bell Road in Phoenix and stop in at Bell Ford, the Arizona Ford Giant. Come in and check out our great deals on the remaining 2020 Fords as well as the new 2021 models just arriving like the new E450 pickup truck during our summer outdoor and SUV sale. Voted the number one Ford dealer in Arizona by Ranking Arizona, we will do what it takes to make your car buying experience safe and convenient. Shop online at bellford.com. We will bring everything to you on your schedule. Schedule a test drive. Need a repair? We'll come pick up your vehicle and bring it back to you. Our sales and service professionals are ready to help in any way to make sure you are happy and satisfied. Go online to bellford.com or call us at 1-602-866-1776 and let us show you why we've been the dealership that keeps Shane Doan coming back year after year. The Arizona Ford Giant, Bell Ford. Welcome back in, hockey fans in the desert southwest, to another Sunday special presented by Bell Ford. Scott Strandy along with Stephen Marsh. Uh, we're still here behind us, beautiful City National Arena. It's different now, though, Stephen. I'm so used to coming up here and just kind of going my own way and getting in the locker room and doing different things. It's not that way anymore. There's protocol now, right? There's seating arrangements. There's limited number of media that can watch practices. Um, you've been fortunate to see one on Sunday, and I was fortunate to be here today on Wednesday. So we both had a chance to see in person, but it's different, right? You can't get down to the glass. You can't take really clear photos. You got to shoot them through the netting. Uh, you get your temperature checked when you walk in. You get uh, briefed on uh, the COVID situation and all of that. When the, the games are of uh, the practice is over with, you exit the arena. You do Zoom calls with the press conferences. Right. Completely different. Just uh, quickly give us your thoughts on that, and then we'll get into some of the funny things that are going on with the uh, trip to the bubble. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned a lot of those things. Uh, you're right. Normally, and, and one of the big things, obviously, is we've we've come to know about the Golden Knights is they they, they pack the practices with fans, and obviously, <laughs> fans aren't allowed to come to the practices. That's obviously a different side. That's the course case, of course, the whole across the NHL. Of course, they won't be playing at T-Mobile. They won't have the fans in the buildings in any of the games, and and that's going to be a, a difference. But yeah, it's been it's been an interesting experience. Uh, uh, you know, as you, right, media is usually a lot, you know, for all this, you know, you usually can go right into the locker room, you can talk with the players up close. Now you can't do that. You got to do everything through Zoom and it's, you know, selected about who they, they pick. And then, you know, you get your, you go to practice here, it's it's very limited media. Um, you're right, temperature gets taken. They ask you if you have symptoms of COVID. And if you're upset there, they let you in. You got to go up the, st right, you got to go upstairs. You can't, all the things you mentioned, you can't go down in the bottom there. and and then you gotta you gotta leave it and and you can't even film in you can't film in there that's during, why we're outside that's why we're outside <laughs> yeah we can't film in there so um you know I can't film these kind of things you can film during the practice with your cameras but yeah it's uh everything is uh but I think it's good because you want the players to be safe and you want them to to start um being protected you know they're getting tested I think uh, uh tw every other day right now when they get to the bubble they're gonna be tested every day and um, and I think we're, I think it can work. We're seeing what's happening with the NBA, and we're going to get to the bubble in a minute specifically. But we're seeing what's happening with the NBA right now. There's no positive tests in the bubble as the players are kind of in their spots, and it seems to be working. Hopefully, the same will happen with the NHL. I think you're probably right. And when you speak of the bubble, there's two hub cities. If you've uh, been under a rock in the NHL for a little while, it's Toronto for the East. It is the uh, Edmonton location in the West. 
Uh, Edmonton had a little problem with a little flooding up there. Uh, you wouldn't have gotten that in Vegas. That's what I'm saying. You wouldn't have gotten that in Vegas. We did have a little bit of rain, a little bit of rain, enough to maybe put a little water on the ground. We wouldn't have added the flooding, though, like in Edmonton. But I'm just, I digress. <laughs> he had to get in a little Vegas talk, folks. Uh, you'd expect that here, right? And a Vegas native and a UNLV grad, why would you not? Uh, when we go up to Edmonton, and, and the guys will be leaving here very shortly. Uh, this weekend, I believe, is when they take off. You've heard some funny things from uh, some of the Zoom calls that you've been on. Tell us some of the funny things or, or ironic things that the guys are planning on for their bubble experience. Yeah, and before I get to that, I do I, I, I do want to say, you know, it, them going to Edmonton, probably smart. I You know, Vegas has been, as well as a lot of the United States, having a hard time getting COVID under control where cases are spiking and Canada seems to have a pretty good um, arrangement there, and you know they were able to get the you know be able to not have to do the quarantine for the players and stuff. So um, I, it seems like it's a better place for them. We would have loved to have it in Vegas, but um, I, you know being in Toronto and Edmonton, and it's Canada's sport. So you know as long as long we get to watch it on TV and and cover it and stuff, um, it's it's great. It would have been nice to have it here, but but totally understand why they went that way. Anyways, about some of the funny stuff you mentioned, um, one of the things that uh, one of the reporters has been asking uh, Jesse Granger, who people might be familiar from the Athletic, he's been asking a lot of people what they're bringing to the bubble because that's what everybody wants to know what are you bringing to the bubble you're going to be there maybe hopefully two months if you're going to be there all the way through the the stanley cup final and a lot of the players have been saying xbox they're going to bring their video games and, and you know, a lot of these are still young players so they they still got they're still kids at heart they're going to play video games to, to keep keep them preoccupied in their or occupied in their hotel rooms while they're not playing on the ice or practicing because you really can't you won't be able to really go anywhere it might be some things you can do but it would be very restricted of what you can do uh, to try to maintain that you stay in the, in the bubble and not expose yourself to potential covid uh, situations so some players talk about some snacks that they're bringing i liked what uh, coach DeBoer said he was asked about something you were going to bring to bubble i'm not sure if you saw that clip but he he said, "Well, we're not. We're going to Canada. We're not going to the moon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, you're going to be able to get stuff in Canada. You know, it's not like you're not going to be able to go out and get anything. So, people are saying they bring all these snacks and something. But Alec Martinez has already sh went to shopping at Costco. Has gotten a bunch <laughs> of snacks and stuff that he's bringing. Paul Stasny said he's going to be watching CNBC on the TV all day. He's into <laughs> all that market stuff and knowing about what's going to happen with the stock market and the money and everything. So, so he's going to be spending a lot of his time watching CNBC. Uh, people, a lot of people bringing their laptops." tablets be able to FaceTime and one thing that's going to be hard about this uh, situation is being away from their families now granted they were with a lot of these people were with families for for, for three months four months and but now they're going to go play and they're going to be away from their families we do want to mention that the starting with the finals what well, I think the second round of the Western Conference Finals or the conference finals of both conferences if the teams can bring their families they'll be able to stay with them in the bubble um, there so that'll be kind of nice uh, Robert Leonard will, will look forward to that I know he was it was gonna be hard for him to, to, to be away and and uh, Nosek who just talked to th today on Wednesday was talking about you know he it was nice for him to be able to spend time at home with his new baby and and and, and wife but now you know he's gonna be away for some time if, if he's if he's on the playing and if he decides to play and, and it's gonna be um, it's going to be a different experience, but you know, a lot of these players might have done this before. Some of the thing with the like a tournament type type thing where you're going to be in a place for about a month or so. Certainly, you know, in the Olympics you do it for about three weeks or something. But for all these players, it's going to be quite a quite an experience. But um, I I think it's it's the right way to do it. The NHL is doing it the the right way, and it's, it's at least we're going to be able to watch watch hockey, and and uh, these players will be able to to be safe and be able to put their best out on the ice. Okay, well, I'll kind of wrap, put a bow on that for you. On two things that I saw, I saw uh, Marc-Andre Fleury, who is always the jokester, was asked what he was bringing. He said his Xbox and a lot of underwear. Yeah, I never forgot about <laughs> that one. Yeah, underwear, yeah. Yeah, you need a lot so, of underwear. Mm -hmm. so, so that's Marc-Andre's perspective of it. Uh, also, when you look at it, though, and, and I want to throw this, it's obviously way different, but... Uh, when you think of military training, right, and, and being deployed, military guys are used to being deployed for several months, being away from their family, different things like that. So um, let's not baby these guys too much uh, for yeah, possibly exactly. two months. I mean, uh, our military that does great work for our country uh, – does way more than this so and, and they don't get to and i don't think they, they don't get a cushy hotel well and they don't get to call <laughs> i don't think they get to call home much either i think they're restricted on that too they're gonna have their phones and stuff and they'll be able to play for video games and and stuff and, and, they, and, and now with zoom and, and skype and all the different things facetime i mean right. it's almost like being there i mean you've been enough for these press conferences to see that so we'll wrap it up this Stephen. uh, uh as I look forward, I'm excited to see what the round robin brings. But even before that, I'm excited for the exhibition game because I want to see what the teams look like. Um, 
as I've said many times over again, uh, our podcast, ITHSW podcast, can be doing a nine-day special starting August 1st till August 9th. We'll do a, a half-hour recap at 6 p.m. Pacific time. Just search us for ITHSW podcast anywhere you get your podcasts. So for right now, let's uh, let's sign off on the Sunday special by saying it's 106 beautiful degrees. City National Arena is behind us. Vegas is ready to play hockey in the NHL. Welcome back to Hockey 2020. The Sunday special has been presented by Belfort. Looking for your next car? Head out to 2401 West Bell Road in Phoenix and stop in at Bell Ford, the Arizona Ford Giant. Come in and check out our great deals on the remaining 2020 Fords, as well as the new 2021 models just arriving, like the new E450 pickup truck during our summer outdoor and SUV sale. Voted the number one Ford dealer in Arizona by Ranking Arizona, we will do what it takes to make your car buying experience safe and convenient. Shop online at bellford.com. We will bring everything to you on your schedule. Schedule a test drive. Need a repair? We'll come pick up your vehicle and bring it back to you. Our sales and service professionals are ready to help in any way to make sure you are happy and satisfied. Go online to bellford.com or call us at 1-602-866-1776 and let us show you why we've been the dealership that keeps Shane Doan coming back year after year. The Arizona Ford Giant, Bell Ford.